you for having me. My name is Hazel Gibson. I am the uh, field director with Great Education Colorado for um, Proposition CC, um, which we just got kind of kicked off because we got a late start since they didn't do the special session to address uh, the issues. So there are two propositions that will be on the ballot this November. Um, the biggest one, the one you're going to get a lot of literature on, is going to be the first one, which is CC. Uh, this is the exact ballot language. I'll go ahead and read it to you. Uh, without raising taxes and to better fund public schools, higher education, and roads, bridges, and transit within a balanced budget, may the state keep and spend all of the revenue it annually collects after June 30th, 2019, but is not currently allowed to keep and spend under Colorado law with an annual independent audit to show how to retain or how the retained revenues are spent. Um, this is the exact ballot or ballot language that you will see. Uh, basically what it is, is we are projected because of Tabor um, to have refunds starting, I believe, next year. And this is just allowing the state to keep those refunds. Uh, so they uh, would go, um, well, most local governments have passed measures similar. Um, especially because we all know how underfunded our schools are, um, which is why a lot of them pass. Uh, these are the things you're going to see. It does not raise your taxes. It's the taxes that are already collected. It does not amend the Constitution. It actually follows the Constitution. Tabor says that our legislators have to go to you to vote if they want to keep that money. And that is exactly what they're doing. Um, the one thing I did like that they did add is there will be an independent report that shows where all the money is spent. Um, it's going to three places in thirds. One third will go through K through 12, one third will go to higher education, and one third will go to transportation and infrastructure. Before we go to DD, which gets a little more confusing, does anyone have any questions? Yes? Is there limits? Like, I don't know how much the refunds are. Like, are they dollars of refunds or hundreds? We don't know, to be completely honest. Uh, we should have the first estimate this month. Um, I, they're saying um, overall that it would be about 103 million go to K through 12, 103 million go to higher ed, 103 would go to transportation. Now, I know a lot of us know um, we have been getting infrastructure and education in the state for a really long time. Um, I know for infrastructure alone, we're about a $9 billion behind um, <laughs> in education. Uh, I don't even want to talk about it, but it's up there as well. Um, so that this is not, this is not going to be um, a fix, quite frankly. This is literally just going to be um, help. Uh, for K through 12, it cannot go towards reoccurring cost. It can only go to um, technology, books, uh, programs to uh, retain and attract teachers, but they don't want it um, going to reoccurring costs like teacher salaries because they don't know year to year if we'll have a taper refund or if um, or how. We don't know if we don't have a refund, then you don't want to have teachers that are depending on that money. So that's why they stipulated that. Um, did I adequately answer your question? No. Okay. Um, but, but I meant like, what are they thinking of refund to taxpayers? We don't. We don't know. I mean, it would be. Um, we don't know the exact <laughs> numbers, but I mean, typically in the past, our refunds have been less than a hundred dollars. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Um, but I don't have the exact numbers, so I can't. I don't want to. I just don't want to say without knowing. But in the past, it's only it's been less than 100 per person. And this would be going forward into so forever. So, you vote for so um, I don't know if you all remember Proposition C that happened in about 2005. It put about a five-year um, pause, and it let the state keep. This is CC. It's basically the same. It's just long term. And did that pass that time? It did pass. It's actually how we kept from 
crumbling in the last big recession. Yes? Who has the power to determine where this retained revenue will go on you said the third, third, third? The legislator wrote, wrote it. The, le so the legislature. Committee. Uh, no, the whole. Uh, Casey Becker, the speaker, Speaker Becker, um, is this is kind of her main project, but all of the Democrats uh, in the House and the Senate signed on it, and one Republican. Okay, I don't think that's not the question I was asking. Sorry. No, they, they're the ones that okay. determine where so it went. So money, yeah. if, if this passes, there's a whole barrel of money, and a yeah. third, a third, a third, we've already said that's being allocated. Yes. Okay, but it, who's going to control the third that's going for elementary Our school? state, our state legislators. Okay. They're the ones that take it all into the general fund and then they separate it out according to our budget. Okay, so is there any governance that says that those taxes that are being retained that originally came from Adams School District, let's just say, goes back to the Adams School District or could all that revenue instead go to a different school district? No, no, this is not your school taxes. This okay. is. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So this is. How would it be distributed across the Thank state? You. It's per pupil. It's per student. That's how it's going to be distributed. So it depends on how much money per student you we get at each county, each school district gets from the state, and that's what it's going to be based on. So right now, the way they do education funding in this school is the state determines, um, gives a baseline, basically. Right? And each school district collects taxes, some more than others, to go towards that per student funding. Then the state comes in behind and fills up the rest to hit that number that they have to hit, that the state decides. Um, so it's going to go towards to per student. So it's going to vary by school district. I can't give you exact numbers, unfortunately. But each student in the state will have more money per, every school district will have more money per student. Thank God. And is this the same thing for higher education? No. Okay, so what happens there? They get to determine. It's, um, higher education is actually a lot, I learned. It is, um, it is not, they get to determine how they use the money. Um, I, I agree. I agree. Um, it is supposed to help with tuition. But no, there is no, um, it is not written in the law. It goes to all higher ed. Yes. Yes, all of it. I'm not 100% on that one, but I would assume yes. I've actually read the language of the bill, um, and it's not written in there. Or otherwise, I would tell you, because I even know how it's going to be divided up on transportation. But for higher ed, they're allowed. Um, the good thing is, is that there will be an audit. Every year, there's an independent audit that will show where this money is spent and how it is spent. So we will have, there is some um, accountability there. Yes? What's the opposition to this, like, um, in terms of why are people saying we don't need this? Because it seems like a pretty big need in our state. Um, my, my, my opinion? <laughs> I don't know if they're going to want me to say this one. Uh, what they are thinking, what um, the opposition is saying, is, is on a, it's not true. They're saying that it goes against TABOR and it doesn't. It is actually what TABOR requires. But they think that if this passes, we are going to attack TABOR in the future. So that's why they are being so aggressive and spending so much money already on this. So it's, it has nothing to do with them actually thinking this is bad. It's that they don't want us to go after TABOR next. And who are they? Is it the Republican uh, Party? Actually, Is it no, industry? No, it's uh, Americans. It's uh, the Koch brothers. They're uh, Americans for Prosperity. Is who's funding the campaign right now? And then it's backed by a bunch of Republicans. But mm -hmm. yeah, that's that's it. That's who's coming in. Any other questions? Yes. No, they're supposed to be an addition. Yeah, it's supposed to be an addition. Not, not, not instead of. No, in all, all the future years. It is written that it is the same every year. Yeah, it never, it does not change. Yes? So it's 
not like a, we're taking the surplus and putting it into these programs. It's just one year? No, no. So we don't have a surplus. So we are the only state in the country that has our tax code written into our constitution. And that tax code has a very specific um, formula on how much money this, the state can retain, can keep, like, and, and anything over that amount, it is supposed to re be returned. The issue with that is what we've seen is that it's kept us, it's kept us behind. So when we're having all this population growth, when we're going by the growth we've had previously, we can't invest in our state. We can't, we've got more students than we did the year before. We've got more people using our roads than we did the year before. But we can't invest in our state because of this formula. Um, what this does is basically says, the formula's still there. It's still what would be considered supposed to be returned. The state would just keep it and then invest it in K through 12, higher ed, and transportation. Right, so what I was asking, no, it's like forever. Three years or? Forever. Oh, okay. This is forever. This is to change it for as, but you have to understand, like, we might be looking at another recession, right? We've right. all looked at the stock market recently. Um, if there's a recession, there wouldn't be a taper refund. And so there, yeah. that of funds wouldn't be there. So this is only if there's our economy is growing, it's us investing back into our state. Does that make sense? So I, I think what I'm talking about is, you know, is there a way to maintain that kind of that cap and get people to you know, pay the tax through getting a job or something, you know, versus having all this influx of people and then just trying to compensate? Yeah, unfortunately, with our tax code being written in the Constitution, for us to change it in any way, it would actually have to go to the voters. So for us to add any sort of tax like that, it would actually have to be on the ballot and the voters would have to support it. There's not, from the, all the research I've done, I do not believe there's been a single time that a bill was on the ballot that asked for more taxes that has passed. Well, you know, what I was saying was I'm not necessarily asking to pay more taxes, but like um, maybe legislation to invigorate the workers so that they know, are. They're paying. Yeah, they're paying so taxes. I, I guess the main, can you talk about how the population influx is creating a, a demand that's outreaching? You know, well, because the formula out. is on years previous. So if we are looking at um, our population growth this year, like we have, say, 100, I'm just making up numbers here. These are not factual numbers. Say we have 100,000 people more that move here than were here last year. Or we have, um, or that many more students. Let's go with students. We have that many more students in our school districts than last year, right? So we need that money this year. But because of TABOR, because of the formula, we cannot say, well, we have more students. We need this money now. No, it has to be because of the year before, which is 100,000 less. So then that leaves all of our students fighting for that money even though there's all these additional students. Does that make more sense, maybe? Well, I guess from like a working perspective, it's like, a, I kind of need the money. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I hear you, like, but I, I mean, like quite frankly, I've, I've, got, I've got two like kids quality. in public schools. I've got two kids in public schools. My, my daughter's school raises over $200,000 a year to offset what we do not get from the state of Colorado. That's great for her. That is awesome for her. I would much rather let them keep less than $100 <laughs> to A than the hundreds of dollars I have to help them raise every year. And then the other thing is, is that not every school can do that. Yeah. So we then have an equity issue in our state. So we've got schools that these kids are getting everything that they need, and we have a school in the same school district that can't even have a computer in the classroom when my second grader has her own computer. That is, we are creating this world of have and have nots, and we are not educating our population, and that's actually why 
a lot of business owners are having to bring people into the state. That is why a lot of people, when they go to higher education, are having to move out of this state because our tuition is too high for public school. <laughs> they, they can go to a private school out of state that has a great endowment for cheaper than they can go to a state school in the state. And those, those people, or they're going over there to get educated and they're not coming back. And that is creating an economic issue in this state. We need to be investing in our state and making sure that the best and the brightest are staying here. And that's what's gonna take us into the future. And this helps with that. And I think that I'm not No, you're good. Right. I think part of maybe some of the hesitation, and I think you're gonna have to fight this on. Absolutely, right, yeah. Is the marijuana tax, but to go to education. And oh, like, do I know. Where is that? And so then I look again, and I don't mind $100, but I were just saying maybe the next year, if it's 200 or 300 or 400 that we're supposed right. to refund it, and this goes into perpetuity, and we're like, okay, how much can we just find a way? You no, know what I'm saying? I, I hear you. Like, for higher education, like, my kids just could not afford to go to see you, so they went to my right. home state. So, like, and if you're going to give them that money, with it's hard, you know, I yeah. understand the deficits, but I'm kind of saying, okay, like, we thought the marijuana tax was involved. The marijuana tax so goes into, um, it goes into school construction. It was right. not allowed, if it's the actual language of the bill. Luckily this, I've read it, it does not keep it out of the classrooms. It can and has to be used. If they cannot put it in their coffers, they have to spend it. And um, that was another thing that was in there. Um, quite frankly, I don't think, I wish, I hope, I hope and pray that our state continues to grow and our economy is thriving and we are doing great. The likelihood of that is is not, right? So um, I, I would love to see a day where we ever got that kind of money back, um, but it's not gonna happen, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> It cost, it cost, it cost, yeah, well it cost, I think on average, $561 per car to drive on our roads per year because of the damage with our roads. Mm -hmm. So every pothole you hit, all the, the damaged roads, the damaged bridges, it cost us all individually, every car, $561. So I mean, if you look at it in that way, you're actually saving money. <laughs> yes? I've read that, and I think you mentioned it maybe 10 years ago during the recession, mm -hmm. uh, a similar amendment. Yes, Proposition C. Five years. years. And do you know how that money was used? Um, that money, it's, I mean, it was in the state budget. We have a balanced budget, so it is accessible. Is the same way, three ways, or? N no, it went into the budget. General. Yeah, it went into the general fund. So it was not allocated for specific things. Um, but it, I mean, we have a balanced budget and we have to keep track of that. So I know that we do have the, um, the ability to dig through a lot of papers and find that information. So, but it, it is in there. But no, it was not allocated this way. Anything else? Yes, ma'am. We are, uh, well, uh, we are $2,700 below the national average. We have not been at the national average of per student funding in this state since 1982. 1982, 37 years. That's how long it's been. That's how long we have been playing this game with our education system. And, and we're ranked in like the top, bottom, like five We are five one states, economy. Or? at the very top of the economy and we are in the top, bottom 10 when it comes to per student funding. And yes. When did Tabor go into effect? And can you just give a quick overview of how that came about? Doug Bruce? Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, it came into effect actually um, around that time, believe it or not, go figure. Um, and Doug Bruce, tried for many, many years to get this passed. Um, it's titled the Taxpayer Bill of Rights, um, but what a lot of people don't realize is it was written in a very specific way yeah, to, to, to do this to our state, to 
get us to not invest, to get us to, um, he wanted this, let's just say that. This was his goal and this is what he always knew was gonna happen. That's why we are the only state that's ever passed this. That's why other states look at it and try and it doesn't pass because it's it's just not sustainable as we're, we're seeing. I mean, we are doing a good job with what we're being given, but we are also paying a really big price. Um, but yeah, it was, it was done by Doug Bruce. He lives in Colorado Springs. He went to jail for tax evasion. Um, not, not a great person if you look into him. Um, I think that gives you a pretty good indication of, of the type of person that, that supported this bill, or that bill, I should say, not this bill. Any other? I think we only have a couple more minutes. What taxes, what taxes are included in that? You said not school taxes, is it mostly sales? Yeah, it's what the state collects. All sales. Yeah. So like um, when your school district passes a mill levy, no, that's theirs. This is all um, like your income tax, sales taxes. Income also. Huh? Income tax also and property tax? I uh, believe everything that goes to the state that goes to the general fund. Okay. What about DD? All right, I know we didn't really get to DD. Uh, DD, we, great education um, is staying neutral on DD. DD is the, uh, um, and this is, it's the tax, it's the uh, tax on sports betting. So it's can the state um, collect taxes on sports betting? Um, it is written in a funny way. This is actually a requirement by Tabor. Um, shall state taxes be increased by $29 million annually to fund state water projects and commitments and to pay for the regulation of sports betting through licensed casinos by authorizing a tax on sports betting of 10% of net sports betting proceeds and to impose the tax on persons licensed to conduct sports betting operations. Basically, it's legalizing sports betting and it's allowing the state to tax it. Uh, that 29 million would actually come out of um, them taxing the winnings and the licensed. Um, it's not us paying more taxes, but because of Tabor, it has to be written this way. Um, so it's pretty straightforward. Basically, it's legalizing and taxing it and then using that money to pay for uh, water projects and commitments. Yes? Does it give some constraints around sports betting? Is it like in casinos? Because I know in Vegas they do sports betting in casinos, right? Um, Yes. Um, it says through licensed casinos. Yeah, they have to be licensed. Yes. Like you go to a racetrack, you bet on those. Yeah, but it's like like in Vegas, you can go bet on basketball, like for the Final Four. Yeah. It's like here, you can go to a casino and bet on, um, on on sports. And then if you win, you'd be taxed. The people that are doing it, letting you bet, they would be taxed, and that's where that tax increase comes from. <laughs> Anything else? 